Yo, welcome back everybody. Today we have gameplay from Cookie, and this is one of those fun, super late games where you see a late game board that looks practically insurmountable. And it illustrates the importance of just giving yourself an opening. Because sometimes, even if they have all of the resources in the world, they're absurdly strong, there are scam outs. There are pivots where you're like, all right, we're going to need a triple from here into something, and that gives us a 10%er. Because even if you don't succeed, there's nothing lost, right? You can just give up, or you can take those pivots into a pivot, into a pivot, especially if you have two or three turns to try it, to give yourself a little bit of an opening to be able to push somebody out of the lobby. All right, enjoy. Were not the cards we named. We named two Quillbor that we wanted. Even Thorncaller's good. But like, why? Why the bad ones? Why not the good ones? We have Dragon, but no Murloc for Skyfen. And we're on three, and we're gonna have to buy that first board. I think we just have to take Tough Tusk. As sad as it is. How can you decide picking hero any tips? It's a big question, bro. It's like saying, how do I play this game? Consider what tribes are in, considering what your first consider what your first four turns look like, given your hero power. That's probably the best advice. Given your hero power, how do you level? How do you play the first four turns of the game? How good are the tribes at playing Tavern 1, Tavern 2, and Tavern 3? That dictates a lot of the power. It's a pretty damn good board. If I had a better answer for you, I'd give you the better answer. Or I'd try to, at least. Dragon or Naga, we never freeze for either of them. This is a good card, but we don't have another dragon to play into. I think we take dragon. It's going to be a tavern four play. New Dragon or Naga are that great on Tavern 4. Getting used to how much gold is on Tavern 1 is a big deal. Maybe is a helpful statement. Like understanding that Naga, Beast, Elemental, and Pirate offer one potential extra gold to change the way you play your first opening turn so you don't float gold and, and play down a minion. Knowing how good Tavern 3 is, so if you need to go 3 on 3 as a backup plan, is that a really big loss or like an average play? Can I have back the other dragon? Can I have him back now? I picked the wrong one. Ew. I'm a new player? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, makes sense. Um, um, nobody expects you to have the right answer. It's just not an answer that you can give. It'd be really interesting to get an AI to learn BGs and see what it defines as optimal plays. And when it gets there, yeah, it's just like not a, not, uh, not really a, uh, an approachable question. Like as, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole. <laughs> I spend a lot of my life around reinforcement learning. It is my background. And the way that the AI would approach this problem is dictated by the programmer. So like what you're saying would be the interesting part would be if it could figure out how to learn rather than what is the weighted set of criterion that it's using to dictate whether something is good or bad 
That portion, if you could figure out what that weighting should be, that would be interesting. Why can't it just be Promo or Terracosa or the other Divine Shield Dragon? We did all dragons. We got fours, just the bad fours. Swing and a miss, cinemas, cinemas. I want to go to five next turn. I like the pair. We can play the Atromatis. This also isn't Doug, so like. It's the Chromanimanu. Twilight Emissary is permanent stats on the board. We could also pick up the pair on it. I'm going to pick up the Felimental pair, though. We'll do it this way. And then we'll level with it. We're going to be like chess, where yeah, it competes against each other over huge volume, and then you decide decisions plus or minus win rates? Sure, of course. That's kind of the core concept of, of learning in general. But the way that you approach the programming of the problem is dictated by the programmer. Yeah, there's no reason why that wouldn't be true. What you're... What you're saying would be interesting there is it would be interesting to see where the weights land over time, not how it would learn itself. What would be the final state would be the interesting part. Just my two cents. Nothing crazy. We definitely like this. Five attack on the bronze ward is pretty decent here. Really don't have any future from this board right now. We're on turn seven, so we're on tavern five. That's nice. But we can't really limp up the six. We could get like a Mechano Drake or Cyborg Drake. We get this triple. I really don't like breaking that for a couple stats here. The problem with this discussion is we're not talking this we're not talking about the same concept of learning. You're talking about learning in an arbitrary sense as opposed to what what machine learning is. And while while it's perfectly fine, it's just it's not a conversation that has a one-to-one -one translation. It's like saying it'd be nice to see how an optimal learning process of Hearthstone would be done. But machine learning does not follow human thought process of learning. It's still a program. Okay. We go find the dragon stuff or the triple or we die. It's a start. That's dragon stuff. Kind of an interesting situation here. Because, like, I'm going to take this. I'm probably taking Bran, too. Even though Bran doesn't have a ton of upside in this lobby. So that means I'm definitely taking this. I kind of like the pair, though. I'm going to leave the rest. Uh. Hmm. Can I suggest something? If you're just in AI, then go learn about it. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what it is. Dude, you're stressing me out. Brother, we don't stress at all here. That's on you. You got this shit. You don't have to stress. You think the threshold for how much uh, gold you can float, waste, rolling is pretty much guaranteed you won't get a top four placement, especially in early turns? Nope. I think there's a lot of times where you should float gold. I believe. Feels a little late to take the sky fin, but I've said that before.
These are trash. I think we have direction. Interesting. Augur's okay. We let it go, though. For the turn. That's our direction. It's just slow. Just really slow in this game. So hard to play both of these cards. We come from another battlegrounds that if you don't get have anything good on the board, you don't have to struggle for long. The sweet embrace of death is always coming. Indeed. I think we just, just found stuff quick enough in this game. Just quick enough. Woo. Actually, heck wait. He gone. Speed up the game, quick. Get as many stats as we can on the board. Just hit seafood, yeah. Yeah, just do that. Just be on six. Also, what exactly was this board? Magma lock? Or goes pretty good. Huffer Quill. Hogger? Yeah, Hogger's too slow from this position. He is not strong. He's on four still, too. Did we see a single Murloc that entire turn? Like, I was just waiting for a Murloc and we just didn't see one. It was nuts. Where the Murloc do? Eat Dragon? Yeah, Dragon's second best here, but Murloc's what we want. Maybe I missed one early on, but like, I was watching afterwards. Why this order? I mean, it's a lot of... Oh, Murlocs are banned. Yeah, Mur Murlocs are banned. No wonder they're not f showing up. It's a big question. Why this order? Yeah, maybe it's because they're banned, you dumb shit. Eh. We're no longer playing toward this. It's fine. We're leveling. Come on, Bofer. Use that brain. Use your words. Hogger. It's pretty cool and shit. Honestly, 8-8 eight, eight for 2 gold is probably the play. I gotta do that still, don't I? <laughs> that sucks.
I want Nadina. We still want Magma Lock to a degree. It's not amazing. We need a Blood Gem. Or a spell. We want Glow Scale. We want gold. I think spell plus potential of uh, gl of uh, glow scale is is the the higher value here. Hold out for Murloc, yeah. Dumb statements by Bofer. Dumb words. What about Murlocs, Bofer? That'd be nice. If only we could find one. This is where I put my Murlocs. If I had one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Acceptable. On the other hand, this is the first place board. Because he's not going to die next turn. Unless he dies immediately to somebody. He's going to outscale us by a landslide. This is a great card. Absolutely phenomenal card. We go only a spell. We can go with blood gems as well. Double selfless hero. Uh-oh. These aren't spells. We're going to need a spell more than we need the selfless arrow right now, then. There we go. That's two. Beautiful. Do we care about taunt? We don't really read as a board. People need to ghoul. We could just get out of brand now. Taunt up Nadina. It's a Calicos. Really not much left to consider. We're just going to pick up something to allow us to be as strong as possible on this turn, and there's one turn left in the game. If there's more than one turn left in the game, that's a bad sign. Those cards. Those ones. That's like the world's best board I have ever seen. <laughs> That means we're dead, right? As the world's best board, we got free, free, glow scale, and triple. <laughs> that is... That is nuts. Alright, 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 alright. That's a pretty big boy right there. Whew. At least the Leroy doesn't connect with this. So the other one can. Naturally. Naturally, naturally, naturally. That's how it works. Perfect board. Ugh, God damn, man. We need him to die. Never keeping this on the board, doesn't matter. Ever care about a one star? Maybe a bad statement, actually. Because I commit Manted here. So there's really no reason to hold Bran. So if you're going to play the glow scale instead, Blaster overwrites that, but still. <laughs> ghoul into ghoul. We both know what the other person most likely is doing. Oh, you're the best little manted. Perfect. Now we got to be... Able to deal with the fact that the Gallywix got a lot bigger than us. We do have two poison. We do have a glow scale for one of them, too. I 
and selfless is definitely a pickup. You'd work with Selfless Baron rather than this battle cry. If we don't think that's big enough to kill anything. It is a divine shielded 50 attack minion. It is a tough one not to play. Skyfin over what though? I'm not gonna play Ghoul in this scenario. I didn't know that this is an infinite board. Not my favorite hits. That was pretty good. Got the tie. But it's a it's an infinite board, right? Kick Sky Fin for Baron. It's just not better though. Unless that's only the poison is capable of killing something, it's not better. And in these scenarios, it's hard to make that read that like this damage and this damage aren't relevant. That's a hundred damage on that board. As opposed to one shield, potentially if both of this thing has two open shields at the time, which is tough to get, and Baron's still alive, and Baron doesn't intercept one of the shields. So in most scenarios, it's just worse. Well. That's just about the best we could have hoped for, huh? I like the taunt, it's interesting. Because we could potentially taunt the the uh, selfless hero. Wow, um, never mind. Don't care about this one, because we want the blood gem for next turn. We hit the second Leroy. That's even better. Game. 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 Game, why you be this way? Why you gotta do this to me? Why can't we win fucking 80 percenters? Why can't we get one goddamn good combat? Game. And now he knows how to counterplay us. One fucking time, game. And the Gallywix has, I'm sure, a couple gold to work with here. <sighs> God damn, Bob. We're gonna need a gym. That's a gym. I think we have to just read he can't deal with us. You can't find a ghoul. Because this thing's practically worthless now. Goddamn game. That was our window. We gave ourselves a good shot. Unfortunately, window closed. God damn it, Bubby! Thanks. I hate it. That's kind of what we have to do, right? To have a chance here. This thing can only kill one minion on the board. Maybe two if the piggy is small, but he's just going to get rid of the stats. 
Eh, I guess he ghouls us and wins, unfortunately. Like, our window was there. Unfortunately, the ghoul line beats us at this point. We win this lobby very, 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 very often. But unfortunately, we got unlucky. Shit happens. That's twice today. We got 1% out of the game that we should have won earlier today, and then that one as well. All right, let's see what we can do. We can get Uther off of this as a start. It's not Uther. In fact, these aren't anything. As Dark Gaze isn't the worst card. We have exactly one board to roll into a viable card. This thing potentially double bumps. It's also nice just because we can have a spell for next turn, Kek W. It doesn't actually give these guys permanent because it or poison because you know it transforms them. Should swap these two. Give me that out. Give it to me, Babsy. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. We kept waiting. We kept waiting. Deserved. Get fucked. Emote spamming piece of... No, just kidding. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> All right. Imagine being mad about emotes. Got him. <laughs> oh, shit. But yeah, we had to completely flush. I still played the blood gems on the... the uh, Leroy here in case he chooses to get rid of the Baron. Because Baron's selfless ghoul isn't is taking up four spots on his board there. If he chooses to play like another Mantid or something, he drops Baron. And then this thing could still live. Otherwise, it's just gonna die. And it's not like we could replace any with anything else on the board, so 